Uh, thank you for joining us uh, at our webinar. My name is Kavita Bernstein, and I am the Senior Director of Strategy and Innovation here at Kendellen. I'll be kicking us off here in just a minute, but first, I want to thank the Arizona Community Foundation, the Virginia G. Piper Charitable Trust, and Helios Education Foundation, without whose support we wouldn't have been able to make the survey happen. I would also really like to thank our community partners who have provided insights and support throughout the survey and results process. I'm honored to introduce you to two of my colleagues. Uh, first is Ken Dallin's public policy uh, advisor, Lindsay Murphy. Lindsay will be facilitating the lion's share of today's presentation. And I'd also like to introduce you to Michelle McKinley, Ken Dallin's data and business intelligence analyst. Michelle will be helping to answer questions from you all. And speaking of which, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, you should see at the bottom of your screen a Q&A function. Please feel free to use that to ask any questions that come to mind. Michelle will be doing her best to answer those questions as they pop up. And in case you're wondering, yes, the slide deck, the recording, and our full report will be available on our website following our webinar. We'll give you some more details and just uh, uh, towards the end of our presentation today. And lastly, and maybe most importantly, we invite anyone that is curious about the survey results that Lindsay's about to share with us today to please reach out to us following today's webinar to continue the critical conversation. Um, and we'll make sure that Lindsay's contact information is shared. It'll be on uh, towards the end of our presentation. All right, so let's jump in, shall we? All right, thank you, Lindsay. So for our longtime friends, welcome, welcome back. Uh, for those of you that might be new to us, here's just a little bit of information about who we are. So you'll see up on our screen, our mission statement, Kendall and uh, our mission is to champion children everywhere by providing resources and support to anyone who impacts them helping every kid achieve the brightest outlook possible. Uh, we are so incredibly proud of our long standing history working in communities in Arizona, and now even in Nevada for the past 40 years. We provide services to early childhood professionals, families, and caregivers. Um, you may have noticed that we went through a rebrand uh, just over a year ago. So you may have known us previously as the so Association for Supportive Child Care or our acronym ASK. So our service delivery mix, what do we provide? So we've been in the caregiving arena for a while now, uh, recognizing that the various places and spaces that children are in when their parents or caregiver, caregivers are working. So you'll see up on the screen this diagram and it shows that same full spectrum from regulated care to informal care and from center-based to home-based care. Our programs provide coaching to regulated care settings, so licensed centers and homes, as part of our state's QRIS. And in addition, in both Arizona and Nevada, we provide education and support to informal family, friend, and neighbor caregivers, otherwise known as FFN, through our Kith and Kin project that's been operating for over 20 years. And although it's not depicted here, we also provide programming directed towards children and families, including behavioral health services and innovative and evidence-based parent education groups. Oh, uh, goodness, we are so excited to be here today uh, and to begin applying our vast experience supporting children, families, caregivers, and early childhood professionals to our emerging research the results of which I will now hand over to Lindsay to share with you all. Lindsay? Coming off mute. Thank you so much, Kavita, and thank you to everyone for being here today. We have been so eager to get to this point where we could share publicly our results from this survey that really stemmed from questions and conversations we had with families about how they were meeting their child care needs, how COVID impacted their work arrangements and their care arrangements so that we could better create solutions with families and what they were experiencing. We started with statewide focus groups and we spoke to families in both English and in Spanish that helped us really create the questions for our 41 question survey that was deployed statewide last November. 
The survey was open until March of this year so that we could gain a statistically significant sample of 608 parents and guardians. Parents and guardians had to live in the state of Arizona, have children ages zero to eight years old, and be primary decision makers for childcare in their home. And if you look over at the map, you'll see shaded areas where we receive responses. The darker the shade indicates a higher level of response from that area. For those of you familiar with Arizona, you'll see some larger areas where we did not have tribal agreements to conduct research. And all of our demographic data will be available in our report on our website following this presentation. The numbers were just too little to share with you today, but we did align our demographics to the statewide census. Um, our parent age skewed a little younger, given that we were talking to families with young children. Our median income fell at about $73,000. And we did ask about employment information since we were talking about work arrangements and 83% of our sample reported they were working full time. Before we hop into keen findings, I just wanted to speak to a little bit of why we selected charts for this presentation in the way that we did. Throughout our survey, we had different types of questions. So some were select one, some were select all that apply, others were select your top five preferences. And so to distinguish between these types of questions and to help us understand why some of them will total to 100% and others like the donut shape will not add to 100%, that's just to distinguish between these questions moving forward. So getting into key findings on working care arrangements, we wanted to know how families were impacted. And we realized that 62% of households had a parent or guardian reduce hours or leave a job to care for children during COVID. 67% of households also had a parent or guardian begin working from home during the pandemic, some permanently, others in a hybrid scenario. We asked how COVID impacted child care arrangements and found that 81% of families altered care arrangements during the pandemic. But we also wanted to know if those changes were lasting or permanent. And we found that 57% of families made lasting changes to care arrangements during the pandemic. Some were ret returned for more, some returned for less, and almost a third had not yet returned to pre-pandemic child care arrangements. We wanted to understand where children were being cared for, who was doing the caregiving. And so we asked families a lot of different options of where their children were receiving care. We sorted them today for you in three buckets. So the first bucket is care in the child's home. These were the options families could consider when they were choosing where, their, or where they were letting us know where their children were receiving care. The second bucket is in another home or a home-based child care. So this could be by a relative, a non-relative, or more part of that group setting. And the third bucket is in a center-based setting. We use language that really tried to be reflective of what families use and how they talk about child care so that we could make sure we were reaching them with the right questions. And so across these three buckets, we asked where children were spending time. Families could select across all three of those different buckets of care. And we found that 83% of households reported using a home setting as part of their current child care arrangements. Now, when we offered the in the child's home options, cared for by a parent or guardian is included in this. And we were really intentionally trying to understand child care outside of parent or guardian care for this survey. But when we included them, it really gave us a complete picture of where children are spending their time and who's impacting them. But when we remove parent or guardian care, we're able to see the fuller picture of who's providing care outside of parents. Still, we find that 45% of households reported using a home-based setting as part of their care arrangements, so even if parents are not the ones providing the care. We then ask families of all of these arrangements, where is your child or children spending the most amount of time? And here we found that more than 75% of families indicated their children are spending most of their time in a home setting. When we remove that parent or guardian care, we can see some shifts in the data, but we still find that 53% of families indicated their children are in a home setting most of the time, even if parents or guardians are not providing care. 
We asked families when they normally need childcare, and we were really surprised to find that 84% of families reported needing less than 40 hours of childcare per week, particularly as we think about our sample being responding that 83% of them were working full time. And when we broke this up based on employment status, we were again surprised to find that full time respondents reported needing between 20 and 29 hours of care per week, most often, followed closely by less than 10 hours of care per week. So we have a lot of questions moving forward that we will hope to uncover about how working families are making these care and work arrangements um, work, particularly after, in a post-COVID environment. Most parents, 64% of them, reported that they needed care on weekdays between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. This was a multi-select question, so families could select all of the different time slots that they needed care and early mornings was found as the most often non-traditional time care slot needed. We wanted to understand more about families and their experience when seeking child care and making decisions and we asked what was most important to you when making decisions about child care. Families could select up to five and what rose to the top more than 9% over all of the others was that the caregiver is trustworthy and nurturing as a key decision factor. Affordability, reliability, health and safety, and that the caregiver has a lot of experience working with children also rose to the top. And then the idea that the caregiver has a good reputation or positive reviews was also frequently selected, so we included that. It was also reflected in our focus group conversations with families where it was often stated that Facebook groups or Google searches were used to help make child care decisions. We have more analysis on these in the report, and you can also see the full selection of the choices families were offered. We wanted to understand barriers to care, and we asked if families had experienced any of these when seeking care that they could select all that apply. What rose to the top, again, was the cost of care being too high. There was a fear of COVID-19 or a fear of childcare outside of close family and friends. There are waiting lists or options not being available when families need them. We asked as a parent or guardian, what would be most helpful for your family? Again, paying for childcare rose to the top as most frequently selected across our sample. Help making sure that children are ready for kindergarten, support with basic needs, and that how understanding if children need more support to learn and grow or help with children's behavior were also what would be most helpful. Again, the full selection of what parents could consider in these choices are available in our final report. And then lastly, we really wanted to understand if families could have whatever childcare arrangement they wanted, if cost and availability were not an issue and we could design some solutions that would align with family preferences, what would that perfect world child care include? This was a select all, and we found that the majority of our sample selected home-based settings for children birth to three. We asked this question in two buckets. So these first two slides are for children birth to three, and of these parents, 67% indicated that part of their ideal arrangement was at home with a parent or guardian. And as we did with the others, we took out that parent or guardian care for this slot, but we still found that 50% of parents still reported wanting this group cared for in a home-based setting. Some families selected more than one option, some families only selected one. And for the families that only selected one, 33% of our sample only selected care in the child's home as ideal, while 7% only selected care in a center-based setting as ideal for children birth to three. When we look at children three and older, we actually see pretty similar trends. And we found that 56% of these parents indicated part of their ideal arrangement was at home with a parent or guardian. When we separate out parent and guardian care, we still find that 51% of these parents report wanting this group, this older group, three and older, cared for in a home setting, even if the parent or guardian is not providing care. 26% only selected care in the child's home as ideal, while 14% only selected care in the center-based setting as ideal. So our takeaways from this study was that affordability is a major concern and a barrier for families. We heard this in our conversations. We saw this rise in a couple of questions across our survey. And so we know that that is a major challenge that families are facing related to childcare. 
We also found that families consistently choose and show a preference for home-based care, even across age groups, and that COVID impacted work and care arrangements in a lasting way for some families. But overall, we are just really hungry for more data. We know that to be responsive to environments, what the child care environment looks like today is not the same as it's looked in the past or it will in the future. So more data is needed to better understand changing environments, changing preferences, and to understand unique communities and their needs. We have future questions and future projects that we're excited if, that you'll be able to read about on our new website today. Um, but some of those future questions are what supports are and are not working for families? How do needs change exactly along the ages of the children? We asked in buckets in this survey, but moving forward, we're more interested in all of the distinct ages of children. Um, more about how families are gauging trust when they're making childcare decisions, since that was most important for families. Um, and then what's standing in the way of it? families reaching their ideal care arrangements that they want? And then really digging in and how working families are managing those work dynamics and care dynamics, um, especially in light of them reporting how little care they needed in this survey. So we're excited to dig on those further and I'm gonna turn this back over to Kavita. All right, thank you so much, Lindy, Lindsay, for an incredible presentation of our survey results. Um, this data set, my goodness, is one that's rich with opportunities to lean in and discuss how this impacts our collective work. Um, colleagues, I think I even saw a question pop up in the Q&A. Uh, this uh, recording, the slide deck, and our final report um, and other materials as well are going to be available on our new webpage that Lindsay just mentioned. You'll see it up on the screen here. It is candelin.org forward slash research. Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us. I do want to remind you of something I mentioned earlier when we just started off this webinar. Um, if there's anything today that piqued your interest more, if you want to connect with Lindsay uh, and talk more about what this data is saying to you and how it might integrate into your work, please, please outreach Lindsay. Her contact information is up on the screen. It's lmurphy at kendallen.org. Uh, and I know because we've talked a lot about it. She's very excited to connect with folks. So with that, if there's nothing else, uh, this was a little bit of a short webinar uh, getting you the data, um, but we hope that you have a beautiful rest of your day, uh, a great lunch, if that's what's up on deck next for you all. And we hope to be talking to you all soon. Thank you again for joining us this afternoon.